Okay, welcome estudiantes to Swell Academy. Today we're talking about invertible functions. When we think of functions, we think of inputs that result in, let's just say, singular output. Uh, There is also the case in which two inputs could result in the same, let's call it seven, in the same output. And these are things we could call function that, that each input has exactly one output. Now something that would not be functioning properly is something in which the one, I keep using three, so we'll just keep going with that. The one input results in two outputs. Uh, that would be like putting, uh, this is my cupcake machine, which I use quite frequently. That would like be putting the same mix into a machine that you're making cupcakes for and the result and ending up with two different results. That's a problem. That means you put in a certain mix and it came out two do- two, with two totally different outcomes. Something is not functioning within that machine. Um, so, In order for something or a function to be invertible, it has to be, in fact, a a function, meaning uh, that the one input can only have one output. Uh, Graphically, that looks like, you know, maybe something linear. Uh, Maybe you have maybe you have a parabola of sorts, and uh, that's not the best line there. Maybe you have a parabola of sorts. And these these graphs have one input that has one output. In this case, you could say, okay, we have two, like a parabola actually will have two inputs that will result in one output. Um, but like a graph for this, something that's not functioning, you will look maybe at something like a circle, graph of a circle, and you see here this would this would fail your your vertical line test and you would have two two outputs for the same input let's say this is where x was equal to three and, and you would have an output of y is equal to two and, and negative two this would not be functioning so if you want to invert look for a uh, function to be invertible and find its inverse these are some things you have to know going into it so let's look at let's look at a couple examples here uh, one being just you're given a graph and you're given this inverse. Now, remember when you look at an inverse, it's it's a function of x that results in in an out an outcome or an output. Let's say y. So if you're looking at its inverse, you're looking at a at a y is equal to x. You're essentially switching your output and input. So if they're giving us f of, of negative one is negative three, they're essentially saying f of negative one they're saying that this is your this is your y and then this here or this result is x. So essentially this question is looking for the x. So what I like to do is kind of set up my coordinate when I'm looking at my inverse and say, okay, well actually my my y was negative three and they're asking me for my x. So what I'll do is I'll look for where y is negative three here. And recognize that here, this is this is my x, which in this case would be four. And if we were looking to graph the inverse, so so the point we have here is four negative three. And if you were in, were going to graph this as an inverse, you would you would switch your x and y, and you would say, okay, this is negative three and four. So you would go here, and this would be the graph of our of our inverse here. And basically, you're just kind of uncovering that. So let's look at another example. Uh, again, here we're looking at um, f of negative 1. So again, your inverse is y is equal to x. And that's an inverse of f of x equal to y. And we've kind of got over that. So let's go ahead and set up a coordinate, which, which in fact, our coordinate for our inverse would kind of be y and x, which I've discuss- I discussed on the previous slide. So here... We're saying, okay, this this y here is one, so we have one, and we don't know what our x is, right? We're looking for that inverse. So what we could do is just switch. What we'll do is switch. Say, what would be our x if our y was y was one? So in this case, we look for where y was one here, 
and then we find and we look, okay, if y is 1, my x is equal to 2. And that's what's going here. And that's where we're using our graph. Essentially, this, this is giving us an inverse input. It's telling us uh, instead of inpu inputting a x, we're going to input a y. So whatever whatever's inside this parentheses here, that's equal that's equal to our y. So we could kind of start looking at this a little bit quicker and say, okay, they're giving me they're giving my, me my y. All I really need to do is look for my x here. And so we go to where where again where y is equal to negative six, and then we find what our x is in that case, and in this case x is negative two. So we come up with a graph of negative two, negative six, and that's our x and y. Now the inverse of that again would be would be the negative six for our x and then the negative two. So it'd be something like this. And it kind of makes sense because if we use our use our y is equal, that's a terrible line there our y is equal to x inverse line. You can see it has an inverted look to it. Like even here, if we're looking at uh, a negative 5, 0, if I graph now a 0, negative 5, you can see that these points are starting to inverse each other. So I continue to kind of just hit on this, this, this idea of inverse. And here we have another one where it's, there's no graph involved. They're just talking about... Um, you know, an inverse of points, and again, the f negative 1 reveals our y, and we're looking for our x, so we're looking for a y coordinate of 5, so we go where 5 is, and then we can trace and say, okay, we have a, we have a point, I don't know why I drew the line back there, we have a point here, this is where y is 5, and then, oh, okay, that must be in our x is 7 in this case, uh, making our point 7 and 5 here. And so we're just basically looking and understanding, okay, this is our y, so let's look at our x, and we're getting an idea about inverses. A um, little hint when you're working with math, right? Uh, like I said, the more, the more you fail... Oh, I just failed at making an L. The more you fail the more you succeed. So we're going to continue to look, just kind of look at these, attempt these types of problems, and hopefully you make a mistake and that'll uncover a lot of information for you guys. Or maybe you just get it on the first try and uh, you get to move on. So I hope this helps and uh, keep working hard.